Uh, I've been playing around with some uh, streaming software so I can uh, do some nice transitions like that. Yeah, okay, uh, office, Danny. <laughs> uh, thanks. Um, so since we're moving to distance learning, uh, I was looking for tools that students could use uh, solely on a web browser, um, especially for text editing uh, for Java files and um, other types of like text files like Python or, or JavaScript. Um, and last year I started using Replit, uh, which is a web-based uh, IDE. And I found it really useful because it sort of is, I, I think of it as a virtual environment, a virtual, uh, virtual machine uh, where you can edit your files and run them in the web browser. Um, sort of like you would download, uh, you would have a text editor on your computer and you run them uh, via an IDE on the desktop. Um, and GitHub Classroom uh, recently came out with a Replit integration, uh, which I found to be uh, pretty seamless. Um, there is some like setup uh, at the beginning. So I'm gonna go through sort of how to set up a GitHub Classroom with um, a Replit repository um, so that you can basically put a GitHub repository with some skeleton files, um, some starter code, and then distribute that to your students uh, to work in Replit. Um, and it has some nice features to also like view the, view the files in Replit or uh, to do auto grading or uh, to give feedback um, in GitHub Classroom and on GitHub. Um, so I'm gonna just go through that process. Um, I'm gonna quickly uh, show you where I found most of this information. Um, on the GitHub Classroom uh, site, there's a help document with uh, online IDE integrations. Um, so this is sort of the stuff that I'm going through. Um, and it has some pretty straightforward tutorials on like how to set up an IDE and then what the student's experience is uh, and how to run the student code. Um, but I'm gonna go through that process and show you all what it looks like. Okay. Um, let me have the, okay. Uh, so uh, for GitHub Classroom, um, I don't believe you need to have a teacher account, but um, I think it's one, one of the issues I ran into was like being able to put on the Replit uh, integration correctly um, was having a, a classroom that was upgraded. Uh, so if you are running into trouble, you might need to uh, apply for a discount for basically making your your classroom organization a uh, an upgraded organization um, and that's basically like sending in your email and what you're using it for to github um, it's a pretty seamless process um, I'm going to create a new classroom here um, just for you guys Uh, and I don't have a new organization, but I'm gonna link it to my uh, Galileo organization here. And we'll call it uh, CS and SF. Um, and if you have TAs, you can invite them to your organization if you want. Um, it also has uh, connections to your learning management system. So Google Classroom, for example, uh, you can import your roster so that you don't have to type in every student's name to link uh, in your classroom. Um, I'm gonna skip that because I don't have my Google Classroom set up yet. Um, but I'm gonna add in here, um, I'm gonna add myself as a student here. Um, just to show you uh, what that looks like. Okay, so this is my classroom. I don't have any assignments yet, but you'll see the number of students, um, TAs and admins, if there's any, 
Um, and then I'm going to create my first assignment here. Um, so I, I already created a GitHub repository um, called demo example um, last night. Um, so you'll see it, it basically is mostly empty except for uh, two files. There's a hello.java and a test hello.java in the source folder. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna call it, let's say demo. And there's different uh, ways that you can set this up. You can put a deadline if you want. Um, you can make this an individual or group assignment. Uh, if it's a group assignment, uh, all the students in the same group will uh, be able to access the same replet uh, for the multiplayer uh, features of replet uh, where they can work on the same uh, workspace together. Um, so repository visibility, I usually leave that as private. Uh, yes, I think they, basically, I think they see the same thing on Replit. Um, I have not tried that out myself, so I, I don't know, but maybe someone else that has tried it can tell you. Um, okay, and I don't usually click this grant students access, but um, you can give them uh, admin access to their repository if you want. Um, hey, Danny, there's some questions coming up in the uh, chat. Do you mind if I ask real quick? Yeah, sure. Okay, first question is, um, and first of all, hi, Bex, great to have you with us. Um, uh, Bex, you're gonna be at uh, the Academy? Yep, I'm terrified. <laughs> awesome, okay. So quick clarifying question, these are, uh, these are not limited by SFUSD emails or, or are they limited by SFUSD emails? So students create their own uh, GitHub account and then they link it to your roster. So the important thing is like putting in your roster and then the students, they can create their own account whatever, which, with whatever username or whatever they want. Amen. And, um, uh, basically you, when they accept an assignment, uh, you'll, you'll see in a second when I accept that as an assignment. Uh, if you put in your roster, they basically click on their name and it'll link their account to your roster. Okay, is that, uh, Bex, does that answer your question? Yep, definitely. Okay. Next question from Ann. Uh, this GitHub classroom is linked to a single file replit and not the replit classroom? Uh, is not linked to the Replit classroom. Uh, it creates a separate rep, Replit workspace uh, for each repository. Um, and did you want to ask a follow up or clarify? Basically, the GitHub classroom is doing what the Replit classroom was doing or Working. is doing. It bypass all the functionality of the Replit classroom. Because the, the Replit classroom, you can set up the due date, you can add comments when you grade it, and you can get back uh, the, the, the file to your students, say, no, it's not done, do it again. So it's kind of a uh, but it's kind of doing the same thing. I but think so. Replit, I, I think it's yeah. I think it's doing some of the, the same things that Replit is doing in their in their classroom feature. Which is which is great because Replit is going to be not free anymore next year if you didn't get any Replit classroom before this year. So it's it's great. It's a way to by, bypass the the feed. Right. Um, so on this page, I'm setting up uh, the repository that I'm giving the students starter code on. Um, and I set up as a template repository. You have to go into your repository settings to mark it as a template. Uh, and then here, um, I'm setting up some stuff for Replit. Uh, now in my original uh, repository, uh, I don't have a, a run file for my replit, uh, and you'll see later on, it'll automatically add one for you. 
um, if you fill this out. So uh, I'm going to put in here um, uh, changing directories and then uh, compiling the Java file and then running the Java file. And I'm going to set the language as Java and then continue. And then uh, auto grading test. I did set this up for auto grading, so I'll show you what that looks like. Um, hopefully, if there's time. And I'm just going to set it as one minute and auto grade test. Uh, and then I'm also going to enable feedback pull requests because this is where, uh, if you want to give uh, specific feedback, you can create a pull request. Um, to put some comments about the student's code. Okay, uh, and then it does ask you to grant access. Um, I've already done that, but basically it goes to your uh, organization page uh, to set that up um, so that it will allow the organization to basically add and make changes to the repositories. Uh, and you'll see, I, I'm the student here, but I haven't linked my GitHub account. So I'm gonna, uh, this is your assignment URL. So you're gonna send this to your students. Um, and you'll see, I, I've already logged into GitHub, but it'll, it'll ask me, okay, I'm joining this classroom. Uh, who am I? Um, so I'm, Danny, um, and this will link my GitHub, uh, GitHub account to the roster that I set up. Okay, and then accept the assignment. And I'll create the repository and import the starter code. And then I'm gonna to go to now the student repository. So this is my student repository. Um, so you'll notice there's a couple of different things from, uh, that are different from the template repository. Uh, one, it's added this dot replit file um, that has the run code for, uh, for, the, for the repository that you put in. Uh, it has this .github folder, which is for uh, the GitHub Classroom feedback. And then in the readme, it added this button that says work in replit. Um, so that's, that's the thing that's really nice is that it will automatically add this button for you uh, so that it will basically import uh, all these files into replit, uh, basically as a, basically you're doing a git clone um, using this button. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and call that first. Um, show you what that looks like. So I'm, I'm already logged into the Replit uh, on my GitHub account. But basically, it'll boot up a new Replit and then it'll do the, the Git cloning to import all those files. And it's also set up to push back. So once, once you finish making changes, you can push back. I can, uh, Replit also has some uh, improved version control now. So um, they make it a, a, little too, a, a little bit too seamless actually, uh, in my case. Because uh, I usually teach students to, you know, all the git commands, git clone, git add, git commit, and git push. Uh, Replit hides a lot of that um, they still show sort of um, the commit and push uh, in, the, in the version control uh, tab here. But uh, basically, it, it's all via a graphical interface instead of command line. It's taking a while with the load here. I wonder if it's my internet. Let me do a refresh and see if that's gonna make it a little, little better. Okay, 
There we go. Uh, so that, that's what it looks like. Uh, and you'll see in my source folder, I have um, my hello file. Um, I just had some basic Java tech, uh, Java functions here. This is the main uh, main method. I'm going to change this to hello world. Okay, uh, put an exclamation point. Uh oh, am I having internet problems? Maybe not, I'm not having internet problems. Okay. Um, so how many of you have a GitHub account already? Okay. Um, Uh, let's see. Uh, so let me, uh, let's see. Um, I think it's, I think it's working now. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, let's do, let's go through the Here's why it's not showing. Right. Uh, so on the student Raplet account, I think it should uh, show now the repository that was just imported. Yeah, so you'll see mine is uh, the demo file here. Um, so basically it imports your starter code from GitHub to Replit. They can work on it in Replit and then once they are finished with it, they should be able to push it back uh, to, to GitHub. Um, bring why it's doing this. Make sure your replica has a port open and ready to receive HTTP. I think it should. Um, maybe I have it open somewhere else. That why? Uh, so to push it back, uh, there should be like a, an itch, a button over here that will uh, that is for version control. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Uh, it might have something to do with this error that I'm getting. It probably has something to do with this error I'm getting. Uh, on the on the left hand side, there should be like a an option to do version control, um, and that will allow you to type in a commit message for GitHub. Uh, you know, describe your changes and then commit and push. Um, you can also do it via the command line. Um, for those of you that uh, are familiar with the command line. Uh, in Replit, they also allow you command line access. Um, so if you hold, let's see, I think it's command shift P. No, command shift P. Might have to be in a text file to do this. or maybe it won't let me because I'm not connected to the Replit for some reason. Okay, let me let me come back to the, the version control. Um, okay, so back in GitHub, um, not this one, on the student one. Uh, 
So once you, once the student has uh, made changes, uh, you can actually give them feedback and look at their test cases uh, in GitHub Classroom. Uh, so this is one of the things I really like about um, about this integration is that uh, once the student has made a repository and linked it, uh, there are a couple options to like view the code in in Replit. Uh, you can go to the repository on GitHub, uh, and then if you put in options for auto grading and uh, pull request feedback. Uh, there are these also uh, review button and view test buttons that you can go to to look at their test file and give them feedback. So uh, we'll take a look at this one first, the uh, review. So this is a pull request um, and GitHub has automatically created it. Um, but basically it'll tell you, okay, you know, have the checks failed uh, for your auto grading. And then you can leave a comment about um, uh, for the student. Um, and usually if there's a, if there's a file that's been changed, you can also, also add uh, specific comments for each line that you want to give feedback on. Um, and then for the test, um, so obviously this is going to fail because I haven't, um, I haven't completed it, but it'll show you, um, the tests that were that were run. Um, so it says there are two tests completed, two failed, uh, and I had, I had two tests in there that were to test the uh, one was to test hello world, and the other one was to test uh, uh, I believe uh, the the square function that I didn't complete. Um, so it was over here. So in this test folder, you'll see I, I put in a, a test file. Um, this is in JUnit, so um, that's a whole nother lesson that I could go into about JUnit. Uh, but basically, it, it runs on these assert statements that uh, you know you check for an expected and if it matches a um, an actual. Okay. Um, so while I try to get my replit to connect here, uh, are there any questions about GitHub Classroom or replits um, that I can answer right now? Can I can I ask a question, Danny? Yeah. So I think there was some discussion about what the advantage of using GitHub in addition to Replit would be rather than just giving kids, uh, you know, a link to the Replit? Uh, so this will, the, the advantage of GitHub Classroom is that you push out starter code or template files to your students. Um, so if you give students a, a Replit link, I think, um, that will go to the same Correct me if I'm wrong. It'll go to the same replit for each student. Um, so this does the work of creating uh, repositories for each student, so each student can have their own set of starter code that they can clone and uh, work on and push back to GitHub. They, they, when you send out a link to a replit, as soon as they start typing in it, it creates a copy for them. They just get their own copy. As soon as they go to modify ah. from what I remember last year. Okay. And I think you can, um, the Replit Classroom, you just create assignments with all this, the code and they get, you know, once they're there, they start working on their own assignment. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's like that for classrooms. So I plan on using it this year, but I didn't, yeah. didn't last year. So any help would be appreciated. Okay. The, the, the issue is with, Replit Classroom, you can do kind of the same thing. You can add your test and then the, the student just have to click on the test button and if they pass, they just submit 
and you receive a mail saying, okay, this student has done his work. So you can check if you want to, to look at the, the code. You can, sometimes they submit and it's not complete, so you might help them. The question is, next year, eh, the classroom won't be free anymore. So the, the thing is, okay, let's use Replit as a single file, but the issue is there's no test. You can't add, I don't think you can add tests to a single file uh, Replit. And the other thing is, how can you look at the code? You have to have the link of each uh, student file. So you have to have like a, a Google Sheet with every link there. So the GitHub could be a solution for next year to handle the, the fee for Replit and to handle the if you if you want to have test case for the student to test. Maybe our new math overlords will let us pay for it. <laughs> uh, what do we know? Yeah, so do we know the cost? I think it's ten thousand. I think so. I'm not sure. I my my other district uh, actually was considering paying it. I'm I'm not sure if they're going to do it. I just told them it's good for this year, but I think I can I can look at the the email from the. The other district, I think it's 10K. Um, I, I got to be honest, it, it not, I, it not especially optimistic. I mean, if enough of us are using it, I think it's perhaps within the realm of possibilities. And you should definitely let me know if you plan to use it. But um, uh, things, are, things are a little tight. Things are a little tight these days. I, 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 under, I understand. Again, it, if you already got a rapid classroom last year, you're good, good to go this year. There's no problem. You can continue for one year. And I'm pretty sure it's one school year. That's good to know. And then maybe next year we're back in the classroom. I can go back to some of my older tools if I have to. Or just use uh, GitHub with, uh, with Rapid. We just have to have a big... Uh, PD session to to go through the 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 steps of creating a GitHub and linking to our uh, a starter code. So so in the past I've used GitHub Classroom without replets. Um, I used to use it with like other online IDEs. Uh, so having this integration of GitHub Classroom and replets. Uh, speeds up that process of, at least for me, of getting the students uh, starter code and then having them immediately work on it. Um, I, I think I would second that, Danny, that like the workflow in my classroom was I would put up a, a GitHub repository and then people could run the code in whatever, you know, IDE they liked. Um, you know, some kids like different IDEs. Yeah, so I think of GitHub Classroom as sort of a tool to, I don't know, automate sort of a lot of the management of repositories, uh, in a sense. Um, I think you get some of the same functionality with the, with the Replica Classroom, um, but I, I've been using GitHub Classroom for uh, without Replica for a while, so this is a tool that I've I'm. Uh, I'm more familiar with. Okay, question about uh, security, meaning uh, we were just chatting, uh, asking the GitHub, is it public, is it private? For instance, I was looking at the practices problems online and I found a, a GitHub account with all the practices uh, problem solution there. So, I'm not sure. I, I've set up, uh, I've set up my GitHub uh, organization to be private. So you can set up private organizations, private uh, repositories, um, so so that only you and the student can access them. Okay, and the uh, the student account can 
okay, we can check if they make it public or private. Can they make it private? Uh, you can set it as private, um, or you, I think you can, you can also set it as public, but I typically set all the repositories as private. So that's, um, nothing is shared out. Okay. Thank you. So we got uh, some interesting commentary in the chat about, um, CS awesome. Um, we, we could save it to the second breakout. Uh, Danny, was there more that you wanted to show us on either Replica Classroom or GitHub Classroom? Uh, I think this is this is enough. Um, okay. Actually, how how much time do I have? We we want to bring everyone back together. And we have another twenty minutes. Oh, okay. Then I've yeah I've I've planned it, Joe. <laughs> I, I was thinking I have like five minutes left. Um, Okay, so I guess the question is, do you want to show more or perhaps we could have Mike uh, show how CS Awesome looks? Uh, let me... And we do have another... Let's quickly show how to... Don't feel... Let, let me quickly don't, show don't, how to like... Cool, don't feel, don't okay. feel pressed. <laughs> and Mike, maybe we'll think about having you do it at 11 if that's all right. Okay. Um... I wanted to show like how to set up a GitHub classroom account um, in case you wanted to, to yes, use this please. for your classroom. Um, so first off, you need a GitHub account. Um, so that would be at github.com. Um, I think it's the sign up is relatively simple. It's just like a username and an and email address. Um, all oh, right, I'm already I'm already logged in, so it's not going to show that. Um, but the the sign up for GitHub is is relatively simple. Uh, for GitHub Classroom, um, so you'll need to in GitHub create a repository. Um, so let me go back to GitHub. <clears throat> Uh, so in GitHub, you'll need to create a, not a repository, a organization. Um, so there's this plus sign up here uh, where you can create a new organization. And I typically create one for each school year. Um, and it can just be the, the free one for now, let's see. Uh, start for free. Uh, and you'll give like your organization name. I name it like Galileo 2020, 2021. Um, contact email. Uh, you link it as a personal account, um, unless you're unless you you want your school to pay for it, I guess, um, or district to pay for it. Um, but personal account, uh, and then in in GitHub, uh, you can upgrade your organization to a uh, an education organization. Um, so in, I think you have to go to education.github.com uh, and they have a page for uh, verifying that you're a teacher and then you can upgrade your specific uh, organization. Uh, and they have a lot of actually different tools for teachers as well. Um, so there's GitHub Classroom, but there's also a whole bunch of other benefits that you could use as well. Um, I don't typically use a bunch of them. So this is going benefits here. Uh, oh, I'm, okay, I'm already verified, but the tools, see what's in the toolbox uh, so there's github um, there's different like uh, domain name um, sites that you can use as well um, I don't use most of these there's Adam which is a text editor um, that would be useful for some of you uh, Arduino Education, um, 
So that's a free Arduino maker plan for six months. Um, I don't use a whole lot of the other ones though. You can get swag. Anyways, um, so the verification process is pretty simple. Um, go back to teachers, get benefits. It'll ask you to sort of verify uh, that you're a teacher. So be an educator, faculty member, a researcher, the school issued email address. Um, what I used to do is upload a, a picture of my school ID uh, that counted as uh, verification. And then they just ask for like a, your email address, the name of your school, um, and then what do you plan to use GitHub for? Um, and I used to do this every year, but I don't think I had to do it this year so far. And it's um, free. Or maybe I did. Yes, this is, this is all free. Uh, and then they should give you an option to upgrade one of your repositories, uh, not repositories, organizations, uh, up your organization to a, uh, to an upgraded education organization. Okay. Um, okay. I think. Uh, I think that's it. Any, do you have, does, does anyone have questions about how to set up a Git repository or um, how to set up um, an assignment? Do you have any videos to do that that you can share with us, like? Uh link just a, a youtube video <laughs> to just follow uh, the steps i believe they have they have instructions like this one i found i i found they had instructions for this um let me see if i go back to help here so github classroom help has a lot of uh guides here uh, so controlling assignment settings uh creating group assignments creating individual assignments uh this is where i found the upgrading your organization um how to upgrade your organization using template repositories auto grading uh leaving feedback with pull requests uh connecting github to your learning management system like google classroom and then uh the id integrations so they have they have a whole page on almost everything you want to know about GitHub Classroom. Is there something specific that you're that you're wondering about? No, I just need more time to do it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Alrighty, were there more questions for Danny? Um, alrighty, we've got uh, about 10 more minutes here together. Um, uh, I'm, I'm wondering what, if people wanna, uh, I, Mike, is it worth doing 10 minutes or would it be better to come back uh, at 11 and do a, a brief presentation or a presentation generally? Um. I don't know. It depends on what people want. I, um, I'm actually just trying to get my head wrapped around all this because I was on leave all last semester. So <laughs> I used CS Awesome all last year and for online learning, I think it's going to be fantastic because it's all, it's just an online textbook with integrated examples and projects. So, um, I don't know. Happy to happy to jump into it. I've I've not used Zoom yet either as a host or anything, so I will be fumbling around for sure. But it'd be good practice. <laughs> okay. Um, why don't we, Mike? Why, why don't we plan on come when we come back at eleven, mm -hmm. high school breakouts? If uh, if you would would give us um, 
give us the overview of CS Awesome. Sure. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, in the meantime, so I'm going to stop recording and I will, um, oh, I'm going to put this up on YouTube and I'll make sure everyone has a copy of the, or access to access to it. Um, uh, I'm also probably going to jump into another uh, breakout. So if you guys want to hang out, we're going to come back together, I think about 9.55 and then we'll do uh, independent study uh, from 10 to uh, 11 uh, so we can get off Zoom for a bit. Um, if you need anything from me, uh, just hit me on Slack or and so on. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take off for now, uh, and I will. But if if we could all come to back together at 9:55, just as a bit of a share out, and then we'll we'll break at 10. Um, I'm 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 gonna jump into a science PD actually, so I think I'll just come back after the cool. breakout if that's okay. So going over the, the first. Come back at 11, Mike. Is that the time? It sounds like it, right? Is that that we're yeah, gonna we're we're gonna we'll do our second breakout from eleven to twelve. And I have a, another meeting to attend as well. Um, what is a, eleven o'clock? What's on the 